what do you do for work? This is a very common question when we meet new people, especially on the weekend when the last thing anyone really wants to do is talk about work. For the last decade, I've answered this question with, I work at a nuclear reactor. When I say this, I get a few different responses from my new friends. Some will say, oh wow, that's so cool, tell me more. Others will ask, do you glow in the dark? <laughs> I wish. Then there's those who'll say something like, oh, interesting, or something that basically means I don't like nuclear, before trying to find somebody else to talk to. I don't blame these people. Nuclear energy in particular can have a bad reputation, especially if you consider yourself an environmentalist. So, before they run away, I tell them I'm actually an environmental engineer by training. I'm passionate about helping save the environment. In fact, this is why I'm so passionate about nuclear energy. I believe nuclear energy is vital if we're going to meet our global emissions targets and prevent the devastating effects of climate change. I'm not alone in this belief. Both International Energy and IPCC pathways to net zero include more nuclear energy. Through my years of work and study, it's become very clear to me that nuclear energy has the lowest overall impact on the environment. Lower even than technologies like wind and solar. Nuclear has the lowest carbon emissions and the lowest land use. It also has low materials use, which means less mining. Nuclear energy isn't perfect, but neither is any other energy source. If you're concerned about climate change, then nuclear should be a preferred technology, because it's the lowest carbon way to make energy. At this point in the conversation, my new friends will say something like, but isn't nuclear energy dangerous? What about Chernobyl and Fukushima? The reality is that nuclear energy has come a long way since Chernobyl and Fukushima, yet feelings around nuclear energy are still so closely linked to these accidents. The Chernobyl reactor had a serious design flaw. Combine this with poor procedures and operator training, and the outcome is an accident that became a household name. Modern reactors don't have this design flaw, and safety culture is taken very seriously at nuclear power plants. Fukushima involved the largest earthquake ever recorded in Japan, followed by a huge tsunami. Following the events at Fukushima Daiichi, operators of reactors around the world once more reviewed the safety of their plants, including defenses against natural disasters and made improvements if needed. Lessons were learned and best practices shared. So is nuclear energy dangerous? Let's take a look. This data represents the safety of different energy sources. It includes the impacts of air pollution and accidents. For nuclear energy, both Fukushima and Chernobyl are included. As you can see, nuclear energy is as safe as renewables and far safer than fossil fuels. Coal is the worst. Not a surprise, really. Burning things literally kills millions of people every single year. Most of the deaths from hydro came from a single tragic accident, an accident that killed approximately 170,000 people. Can you name the accident? It isn't a household name like Chernobyl or Fukushima. It was the Banchow Dam failure. Sometimes people can think that nuclear energy is more dangerous than it actually is. So, at this point in the conversation, I feel like I'm doing okay. I'm thinking that maybe I've changed my new friend's opinions on nuclear energy. But then, 
the conversation turns to nuclear waste. Just the mention of nuclear waste can cause an icky feeling in the pits of some stomachs at many a weekend event. But how bad is nuclear waste really? Are nervous feelings justified or are they making the fight against climate change more difficult? I'm afraid of many things, but nuclear waste isn't one of them. Today, I want to share a surprising message. Nuclear waste isn't what you think it is. I believe it is the key to our future energy needs. To get a clearer picture of what nuclear waste is, let's take a crash course in nuclear energy. Who's ever sat by a fireplace? Yeah. Warm, romantic, mesmerizing. Fireplaces are great, except you need to keep on adding logs. If you don't, the fire goes out. This is very similar to coal or gas energy generation. You need to keep on adding fuel non-stop, otherwise, no energy. And the resulting air pollution and carbon emissions from burning things, well, we all know this is a serious problem. Now imagine a different kind of fireplace. This fireplace also runs off a set of logs, but each log stays in the fireplace around three to four years. The fireplace burns continuously for many months at a time and generates no air pollution or carbon emissions. This is nuclear energy. The fresh logs used for nuclear energy are called fuel assemblies and they look something like this. Long, thin metal tubes containing pellets of uranium. Each pellet is the size of a gummy bear and generates as much energy as eight to 900 kilograms of coal. To make nuclear energy, these fuel assemblies are put into the fireplace, a nuclear reactor. There's a fair bit happening in a nuclear reactor, but here's what you need to know. Tiny particles called neutrons are traveling around all over the place. When a neutron hits a uranium atom, two things can happen. The uranium atom can fission or split, generating energy. This is the whole point of a nuclear reactor. This is how you make the energy, by splitting atoms. The other thing that can happen is this uranium atom can capture the neutron and become a bigger atom. When another neutron comes along, this bigger atom can fission or capture the neutron. The two smaller atoms left over when any atom fissions are called fission products. So, fuel assemblies containing uranium are put into the reactor, then after three to four years of this fissioning, capturing process, the fuel assemblies come back out. Used fuel, also known as nuclear waste, beautiful contains approximately 96% uranium, 3% fission products, and other big atoms called plutonium, 1%, or minor actinides, 0.1%. This used nuclear fuel is the nuclear waste that some of my new friends find icky. It's radioactive, and it's long-lived. But there isn't much of it, and it is very, very well managed. Despite generating energy for years, the vast majority of nuclear waste, the uranium, plutonium, and minor actinides, haven't fissioned yet, which means they're not necessarily waste. They are a valuable resource just screaming out to be put back in the fire. And this is why nuclear waste can be the key to our future energy needs. If we can recover the uranium, plutonium, and minor actinides from nuclear waste, we can put them back in the fire and create some sort of circular nuclear waste recycling utopia.
If my new friends already haven't made their escape to go to the bathroom, <laughs> they, like so many others in society, are usually surprised that nuclear waste can be recycled. They want to know how we do it. The good news is we already have the technology to recover the uranium and plutonium from nuclear waste and reuse some of it. <laughs> Using today's technology, we can get about an extra 30% energy through partial recycling. For nuclear waste to be the key to our future energy needs, though, we need a particular kind of fireplace. We need a fast reactor. Remember those neutrons traveling around all over the place? A fast reactor just means the neutrons are traveling faster than in a conventional nuclear fireplace. Fast reactors have the potential to recycle all the uranium, plutonium, and the minor actinides from nuclear waste. All of it. They work by converting the uranium into bigger atoms, which will then fission. With fast reactors, we can get 60 times more energy from uranium compared to today's conventional nuclear reactors. 60 times more energy. We can re dramatically reduce how long nuclear waste stays radioactive for, from many thousands of years to a few hundred years. We can also reduce how much uranium mining we need because we can use our waste products instead. To reach this circular nuclear waste recycling utopia that I dream about, fast reactors designed for waste recycling need to be widely commercially available. On the bright side, fast reactors are not a completely new technology. Some have operated in the past, a few are operating today but widespread use will take research and development, commitment and investment. We need to change the way we think about nuclear waste and nuclear power to fuel this new investment and power the politics needed to build these reactors of the future. We still need to be building conventional nuclear reactors today because they work. They're sophisticated. They're as safe and as clean as renewables. Their waste is the fuel for future fast reactors. We don't need to wait to embrace nuclear energy today. By now, my new friends will often say that I've definitely given them something to think about. Some might even say that maybe, just maybe, Nuclear energy isn't what they thought it was. This reminds me of surveys which have shown that the more informed people feel about nuclear energy, the more likely they are to support it. If we do reuse nuclear waste in fast reactors, the positive environmental implications and impacts on future generations would be staggering. Clean, abundant energy for thousands and thousands of years. Fast reactors are one piece of the puzzle. But if fear and stigma towards nuclear energy continues, then politicians may hesitate to pursue nuclear to its fullest potential. Nuclear waste and nuclear energy could be the key to our future energy needs, if we want it to be. Thank you.